Caitlin Armstrong is back in Austin, Texas and lawyering up. A new mugshot has also been released of Caitlin Armstrong and this is it. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The mainstream media's coverage of Caitlin Armstrong's arrest has been patchy, delayed and at times inaccurate. Some are still referring to Armstrong as a 35-year-old, while others say she was on the run for about 50 days. I've been waiting for confirmation of a tweet that came out two days ago saying who her lawyer is and the information surrounding that. What we do know for sure is that Armstrong is back in Austin now. I think she arrived back earlier this afternoon, uh, Tuesday afternoon, where it all started. The reporter pictured here is reporting on Caitlin Armstrong being back in custody in front of the Austin PD building. We also know that Caitlin has lawyered up and some sources indicate she has two lawyers. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So have a look at this tweet from Ryan Ortulo from uh, Austin, Texas. I think he writes for the Austin Spectator. And uh, on as early as July 3rd, he was saying that Caitlin has hired the Austin lawyer Rick Kofer to represent her and even provided Kofer's statement that uh, they are not making any statements to the media at this time. It's also interesting that he refers to um, Caitlin or her attorneys plural. So that does seem to support this idea that there are multiple attorneys uh, taking up her cause. And of course, it seems like that she can afford it. She has the resources to pay for quite an expensive defense. Also, motions are already in play with the prosecution wishing to raise bond above $3.5 million dollars and request another hearing. And I believe it was the same reporter who tweeted saying that's the highest bond he's ever seen in Travis County. Caitlin may not venture out between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. based on her bond conditions, uh, so there's a curfew there. And then you can have a look on the Travis County government website for some of the, that's the 403rd District Court, for some of the motions that are already in play. Looks like there might be a motion on the 7th. Her defense lawyer is a big hitter. It's Austin-based Rick Kofer, who is regarded as one of the best in the country. Certainly, if you look at some of the uh, online coverage of um, some of these Austin lawyers. And he's associated with Kofer and Connolly, PLLC. According to an attorney profile on uh, Super Lawyers, the Super Lawyers site. Rick Kofer is a partner with Kofer and Connelly, a law firm in Austin, Texas, nationally known as among the best criminal defense attorneys in in America. Uh, Kofer has more than 14 years of legal experience and was recognized last year as the best lawyer by the Austin Chronicle, a rising star by Super Lawyers and top 1% by the National Association of Distinguished Counsel. So it's likely being as good as he is, is probably also pretty expensive. We've recently seen in the Barry Morphew case just how destructive a strong defense attorney can be to a prosecution. There's also a similar scenario to the Morphew case here in that a bicycle is used as staging or certainly appears to be so. It's not clear whether Kofa will be assisted by Houston-based Naomi Howard or whether Howard simply advised Caitlin while she was in transit in Houston to a jail in Austin. Now, Bicycling Magazine, that's a publication I was published in once upon a time when I was a freelance magazine journalist, is continuing coverage of the story. They've highlighted Caitlin's blunder the blunder that resulted in her getting caught. And this is a quote from the magazine. Quote, When she got to Costa Rica, she didn't really move around a lot. And that's according to the uh, deputy in the U.S. Marshal's office, Fila. And he said this during a press conference. He said, We knew she was going to be associated with some type of yoga studio 
When foreign officials arrived at that yoga studio, they did find a handwritten login that was the same alias uh, that she was going by when she traveled to Costa Rica, end quote. In other words, she was using her sister's name. That was the handwritten login that they found. Going back to the quote from the press conference, Fila said, once they developed that pattern, it really opened up things and they quickly closed in on Caitlin Armstrong, end quote. The pattern that he's talking about is the sister's name and yoga studios. In other words, that's quite a simple way of filtering out or um, sort of narrowing down your search. If in Costa Rica, you just sort of go through yoga studios in Costa Rica and you just look for a particular name and then that is what came up. I don't know if Caitlin or her family are or were big on social media, but if my coverage um, was seen, and I suggested in my coverage early on that based on Caitlin's LinkedIn, authorities might want to go and check out a yoga studio in Indonesia that she appeared to be affiliated with. If you just took that thinking a bit further, you could see how people who didn't know from above soap would have tried to track her down, and that is exactly how they did track her down. The point being, yoga seemed to be part of her future, just as it was part of her past. Had Caitlin left her yoga mat at home, perhaps the search for her wouldn't have been as straightforward. Now, obviously, we all think we are experts at true crime until you're in that situation yourself. We think that it's all very, very simple and very easy until you are in that situation. And of course, uh, most of us don't really have experience in these scenarios. One of the best predictors of future behavior of any person, criminal or not, is past behavior. It's very, very difficult to start a new life by doing something completely new. But that is really the challenge for someone who's on the run. And it's a challenge that most, I guess, don't succeed at. In order to start a new life, in order to break from the past, in order to draw a line between the past and the future, you need to reinvent yourself, reinvent an identity. And obviously by taking her sister's name, she wasn't doing that. By taking the talents and experience and knowledge of her past, she wasn't doing that. Of course, it's a very difficult thing to build a life from scratch. And again, one wonders what Caitlin was thinking when Mo came to town in Austin, I think it was May 10th, not that long ago now, almost two months ago. What was Caitlin thinking? Was she thinking that she might need to start her life from scratch anyway if she broke up with her boyfriend? As I've said previously, sometimes it comes down to just a simple failure of the imagination. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.